Hello everybody, this is Mike Levin, and today I'm going to talk about another infrequently addressed topic, which is timeless tech versus sexy tech. And what I mean by that is you're standing here early in your career and you're making decisions about what you want to do next, what topics you want to take up. And you say, you have this general notion, I want to become more technical. Now, to me, becoming more technical is really a euphemism for just having more capabilities, for being able to do more things, more control in your life, more control of your career. So whenever you head out on that mission, you are going to, in not too long, encounter what I think of as the wedge. Now what is the wedge? going to push your decisions in one of two directions, either up this way, the sexy, sexy games, and I would also say with an expiration date. Now of course all tech has an expiration date. But the games tech, which has a few things in common that makes it really very appealing, are such things as intense visual feedback. controllers, good I.O., uh, let's just say game controllers. And this is really about screens, this is about uh, input devices, so really all we're talking about here is a certain closeness to the hardware. And as we are coming to know, any particular hardware is really a certain snapshot in time. Hardware is inevitably always going to change. The kinds of hardware we're talking about here are certainly phones. And to a some extent desktop computers as, as game consoles, but we'll just lump everything together there, calling them game consoles. So, when you're starting to develop, it's, it's very, very appealing to make things that have great visuals, that interact with controllers, or close to the hardware, and are basically the, the game's life. And, you know, it's a really good way to go. I'm not putting it down. Here lies uh, the Angry Birds. Billionaire Lottery. You can make a lot of money making a physics engine and, and games based on it. But the other side of the wedge shall we call it, if this is sexy sexy, we shall call this boring. In addition to boring, it is systems. And in addition to systems, it is timeless. There is no expiration date on this. Some of the details of the way you program might be different, but it's going to be characterized by things just like the, uh, the games, starting with lots of text. And shall we also mention typing. 
it's also going to be characterized because you know your input output it's not going to be game controllers you're going to know that data is flowing around and these things are various forms of data monitoring and opposite of closeness to the hardware there is quite literally often a physical distance from hardware and when it's not a physical difference it's uh, oftentimes a, a symbolic difference because the fact that there's real hardware there of a particular architecture is oftentimes abstracted away so you don't have to think about it so it's a lot more typing seems a lot more boring it's not a, necessarily a game. You can introduce game dynamics and data monitoring. That makes it interesting. And uh, the hardware is not so important. Uh, you're not programming for a particular phone or a particular game console. You're just programming for systems in general, usually a Unix or Linux system. And whereas there was the Angry Birds lottery here, I would certainly not put down the systems programming. There is the lottery here, and I would propose to you things such as Instagram. While they have a strong visual component, they are very much back-ended by servers. You know, I would also put WhatsApp here. These other things only got sold for mere billion. This got sold for close to 20 billion. So the lottery does exist here as well. A lot of the programming takes place on servers, handling all those pictures being posted, all those text messages being sent to each other. And, you know, the servers are often abstracted away, and what you're dealing with often is, is a cloud. So this other direction, this boring systems direction, often has you programming servers and cloud, but there's this thing in the middle which kind of belongs to games and kind of belongs to systems, and that is the web. The web kind of exists here in the middle of it all, helping to bind together all these different uh, paths you can take. So chances are you're gonna be forced down one side or the other of this wedge based on your preferences, not really forced, but you're gonna gravitate either towards games or towards systems. But in the long run, every side has to acknowledge the existence of this platform, which is kind of like the games platform, kind of like the systems platform, because uh, the building of web pages is very frequently done from servers using server technologies, but you're sitting in front of it holding a mouse or a phone with its accelerometer, much like um, like games. So there you have it. The uh, bad news is is that when you're starting out, you're going to want to take one of these two directions, one that either has a lot of uh, tech going bad over time and relearning and relearning, and relearning. I and G, well you get the point. And then this other direction, which has less relearning, it might be a little too much to call it timeless or obsolescence proof, but just to make the point, I will in fact call it timeless in this direction. So, as you're starting out, the path I am going to lead you is the less traveled, less obviously useful systems path to learn how to do servers, your own, your very own hardware. I'm going to use things like Raspberry Pi, uh, Shiva plugs, and other servers that you can be running very locally and also use the cloud because you can never really walk away from such a huge advantage of the Amazon Web Services, Rackspace, uh, Google App Engine, and all these other wonderful cloud technologies that eliminate a lot of the overhead of the server direction. Um, and then, uh, of course, then focusing on apps that bring the web into the picture because it's a reality of life we're just not going to get away from. 
And with me, the real uh, core piece, the core piece of learning is quite literally the core, the parts in common to Unix and Linux that characterize this path and have what I imagine to be about 20 years of life in it before things change so dramatically that you do eventually have to relearn. But Unix has been around for approximately 40 years. It's probably going to be around for another 40 years, regardless of how things change and regardless of how little you actually see Unix hiding there underneath of all these things, uh, such as wearables, almost every single wearable has Unix or Linux underneath there. Thank you.